Good morning. Um, my show is coming up at Contemporary 6 and I'd just like to introduce a few of the paintings individually, giving us a chance to chat through them, how they were made, uh, some of the meanings for me, that doesn't mean they mean the same things to you or to anybody else, but just what it has meant for me to make some of the paintings. Um, so this piece, um, working titles, I don't even know what the show is going to be called, so I certainly haven't got titles for all the paintings, although I am working through titles. I've got a, uh, not a spreadsheet, just a Word document with, with all sorts of possible titles for each of the paintings, because I think that's quite important. Um, so this started with uh, this photograph of some friends in America um, and as you can see it's a bit of a blurred photograph but I loved the psychological relationship between them and the beautiful cool light that's striking uh, Portland's face and so I did a few little scribbly drawings which I don't have right here but from those drawings I expanded the space um, into this little study which makes me think a lot of Edward Hopper type scenarios glimpses through a window into this space with a single light and a psychological thing going on in the space um, I'd like to develop that at some point but as often I don't develop everything before a show so then this was painted this was painted over um, an old painting which is helpful particularly toward the edges because you've got darker colors and rough textures underneath um, and it really helps to keep the energy in the brush marks. Um, we saw an exhibition of Walter Sickert at the Walker Art Gallery and that was very influential both for the sense of psychology there's a painting called Ennui which has a couple in uh, so the psychology of the figures but also the the mark making like the blob on the end of her nose, I don't know if you can see that, a single blob of paint used to try and convey um, uh, a lot of information. So then from this study, um, what I did is I, I photographed it So I photographed this painting um, and put it into Photoshop and, and just overlaid a simple diagonal grid. I like to do a diagonal grid because it means I don't need to measure the grid very well. And then so from this image I then got this canvas which is a linen, rough weave linen canvas. It's from a long time ago, I was doing a commission and um, of Uncle Kevin and um, this turned out to be the wrong shape canvas. So then I just put some colours all over it and it's been hanging around since. So this is a lovely linen rough weave canvas. So making sure the proportions are the same, I drew lines, you can still see some of the pencil lines, just those diagonals. So it's not gridded up, you know, centimetre by centimetre, but it, it's just so I can get the, the location of things within that. Um, and then some paintings of this size might take five years for me. And then this was done in more like, I don't know, maybe three days, three days working purely on this. I'm not really sure. Um, but as you can see, maybe I'll bring it a little bit closer. Um, it's very much about some of the marks. Now, I don't know exactly what you can see, but um, the first marks that are put on are very gestural, very energetic. And towards the edges of the canvas, those first marks are left just as they stand. I had massive accumulations of paint on my palette, so I was able to, to use those and feel generous with the paint. And the paint is put on with a palette knife and with brushes. And then it's a matter of really slowing down and repainting the heads numerous times, particularly the, the girl's head. That was, that was painted many times because in this version, the head is quite light. 
But I didn't want it to be a portrait. I wanted it to suggest the person, of course, and the sense of light and the fact that she's perhaps looking at a screen over here. So her attention is away from the man. And there's various things that get changed from through the initial drawings and then into the study. Like, for instance, um, just by chance, well, I changed the colour of his shirt to blue so that it would contrast to her shirt. And then, I don't know how these arms arrived, but it felt like if he's like this, then he feels more grumpy, which is more interesting psychologically, because it's like, I'm not getting any attention, and she's looking at the screen, and when will she ever look at me again? A sort of effect. Um, and also his leg. So in the photograph, his leg is just more foreshortened, coming to here. But I felt in terms of the composition, it would be better to have this long leg with the foot sticking out so I just I this shoe is entirely invented in this leg um, but I like the shape of this dark sole coming towards us and in terms of the composition a lot is worked out in here with this congregation of lights down here all this area is the big light slab and then above it things are subdued into a very close tonal range. Um, yeah, so I like paintings ideally to have um, interest as a painting, as a physical thing. I'm very interested in the paint itself and the color, but also interested in the psychological uh, implications of, of people and how you can read your own story into that. So um, yeah. If you've got any suggestions of titles or if you're able to come to the show and say what a painting means to you, that's, that's so much better than me telling you. But I thought I'd just share my thoughts on how it was made. Thank you.